Hello, good day students. You are welcome to physics class to be taken by my humble self, Manir Muhammad. Today we want to have a look at applications of sound waves, under which we'll be looking at musical instruments, echo and its applications, then finally the hearing aids. Under the application of sound waves, we want to discuss on how sound is being generated. So, any vibrating object, whenever an object is set into vibration, that means the object is being disturbed. So, we consider such a vibrating object to be a source of sound because definitely when an object vibrates, it will bring about a sound. Sound can therefore be produced by any vibrating object. That means vibrating object is considered to be a source of sound. Sound can be produced in musical instrument by striking the instrument, by plucking, or by blowing the instrument. And that will lead to generation of waves that vibrate at its natural resonant frequency. So when an object is being disturbed, it vibrates and that leads to generation of sound waves. Musical instrument now. All musical instruments are considered to be source of sound because as they vibrate, when struck or plucked, they produce a sound. So because of that, we consider musical instruments as sources of sound. What are the types of those musical instruments? Musical instruments have been categorically divided into three. So we have three types of such musical instruments. We have the wind instrument, the string instrument, and we have the percussion instrument. Let's have a look at the first one, that is the wind instrument. Wind instruments are used in producing sound waves by setting the ear column into vibration. That means when you blow the column, definitely there will be a vibration in the column of such an organ or such a pipe or whatsoever type of material you are making use of. As a result of such blowing into such a pipe or an organ or such a, a wind instrument, as a result of that, you will observe that a stationary and longitudinal waves are going to be produced. Meaning the types of waves that normally used to be produced in wind instruments are stationary, at the same time they are longitudinal waves. You can recall when we were in the class, we discussed what stationary waves are. Let me repeat that one. Stationary waves are waves that are being formed when two progressive waves of equal amplitude, equal wavelength, traveling in opposite direction are combined. In the case of longitudinal waves, you are aware that those are the types of waves that travel parallel or in the same direction with the source that produce or generates the waves. What are the examples of these wind instruments? We have the trumpet, the pipe organ, the flute, the horn, the xylophone, the clarinet, and others. Those are the examples of wind instruments. Now, string instruments. String instruments are essentially made of tightened strings. That means the string have to be very tight. It shouldn't be loose. Because when it's being loose, you would not be able to generate a very efficient sound out of it. O wires which when struck, as you strike such wires or such tightening string, it will produce a transverse wave. If you observe, you will strike vertically downward and the wave will travel along the string or the wire horizontally. That means you are, the source of the wave is vertically downward while the wave will travel horizontally. So that means this, the source is perpendicular or transverse to the uh, direction of the travel of the wave, so it's called such waves transverse waves. Such transverse wave will be transmitted to both ends of the string. One will go to the right, one go to the left, or one will go to x direction that's positive, one goes to the x direction negative. So the instrument contains various number of string. In most cases, if you are not using a single a single string, it mostly contains various number of strings vary in thickness and length which produce different qualities of sound depending on the length thickness and the nature of the material you are using as a string in producing the sound 
the examples are there the piano the guitar the violin and uh, and what have you now percussion instruments percussion instruments produce sound when struck or when you hit them they have taut skin membranes or plates which do vibrate when struck the sound notes produced are usually of short duration meaning the duration of such sound does not last long the example is your talking drum when you use your talking drum made of skin it gives you uh, a sound that's a very good example of percussion instrument you have the toning fork the one we normally use in the lab to generate mechanical waves and ripples in water we have the gongs the bells and etc now equations of sound wave i said here that sound waves uses the normal equation applicable to other wave it uses the normal equations that applies to other waves whenever a sound is traveling in air the speed of such a sound can be determined using v equals to lambda f where the v is the speed at which the sound is traveling the lambda is the wavelength of such a wave, then the f is the frequency. But you can recall that frequency is the inverse of period. That means our equation 1, which is v equals to lambda f, is equation 1. When you substitute equation 2 into equation 1, that is f equals 1 all over t, you end up having the equation 3, which says v equals to lambda all over t, capital letter t, that is the period. So the definition of those terms are there. V is the speed of sound in air, even in meter per second. That's the unit meter per second. Wavelength is in meter, frequency is in hertz, and period is given in seconds. In th that's, is, that, that's the period is given in seconds. Examples now. Example number one says that a source of sound, let's say a loudspeaker for instance, produces waves in air of wavelength 1.65. That means the last speaker was able to produce a sound that has a wave. In such a wave, from a particular crest to the next is 1.6 meter. Likewise, from a particular trough to the next is 1.65 meters. So now, if the speed of sound in air, that is the nature of the atmosphere is such that the speed of sound can travel a distance of 330 meters in one second. What will be the period of vibration of such wave that has been produced by such source of sound? Solution. From the question, we have said clearly that the speed of sound in air, V, is 330 meters per second. The lambda, which is the wavelength, is 1.65 meters. And we are trying to find the period. From our v equals to lambda all over t, that's our equation 3, v equals to lambda all over period, what we will do is to make our period subject of the formula. When we make your t subject, you have that t equals to lambda all over v. So you now substitute the value of lambda and v in that particular formula. When you substitute, you have t equals to value of lambda is what? Is 1.65 you put it there all over the value of your speed of sound in air which is 330 meter per second when you divide 1.65 by 330 your period will be exactly 0 0.005 seconds that means that is the time it will take such a wave to make a single or a complete oscillation hope it's very clear Example 2 says that a source, sorry, a sound wave generate as a sound wave generated at frequency of 1200 Hz. A sound wave was generated at frequency of 1200 Hz. Determine the wavelength of such a wave if the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second. So if you make use of V equals to lambda F. Because we have V given, we have F given, we want to determine the value of lambda. So if you make use of V equals to lambda F, since you want to find the lambda, we try and make our lambda sort of the formula, and that will give us lambda equals to V all over F. The value of our V is 330, while lambda is 1200. 
when you divide your 330 by 1200 the value of your lambda will exactly be 0 0.274 meters and that will be the wavelength of such a wave so here we stop we continue next class see you next class bye bye